Hey, I'm David, lead for Daghouse. We build Web3 storage and NFT storage, uh, which have grown a bunch in the last year. Alan, am I flipping to the next slide? Uh, because it is a reliable, performant, hosted IPFS solution that gets your data onto Filecoin. Uh, you can see total uploads have grown to 80% over the last year. Uh, but today's deep dive is about our next chapter as a team and a product. Next slide, please. Uh, to meet the needs of our users, we've had to utilize centralized input providers for performance, reliability, and scalability reasons. Uh, but the plan has always been to increasingly rely on decentralized Filecoin infra as it's become ready to reduce costs and take advantage of the global network of many independent nodes. Next slide. Uh, we had been planning to nucleate this year uh, with the immediate focus for us on adoption with users willing to pay a premium for our services. Uh, but given crypto winter, we've pivoted now to helping Endres enable the end-to-end -end Filecoin story from a user's perspective. Uh, this includes building protocols and libraries for developers to take advantage of Filecoin, regardless of whether or not they're a Web3 or NFT storage user, and dogfooding these protocols ourselves to progressively decentralize our own infrastructure as the Filecoin stack becomes increasingly mature. Next slide. Uh, so W3Up, we're excited to share details of our new upload protocol, W3Up, uh, in today's deep dive and uh, continuing throughout March. You might have heard a little bit about this in Lisbon last year, and it's come a long way since. W3Up is a storage protocol, API, and set of clients that allows users to verifiably upload data using their own identity. It's designed as a protocol to be used by any quote-unquote storage service, not just Web3 and NFT storage, but anyone moving data around, especially across permission boundaries. Uh, we think it could be really useful for many Endres and PLN projects. W3Up offers a layer of abstraction for an actor to send data to another actor, only it does so in a self-sovereign and verifiable way, bringing IPFS and decentralized authorization protocols to the table. It fills a similar need, quote unquote, S3 compatibility compliance is trying to fill, only it's truly portable top to bottom. This also allows us to progressively decentralize our services as decentralized infra options become viable to fully rely on without requiring a big code migration from our users' perspectives. Um, but it also does have a, a number of immediate benefits as well, uh, such as faster uploads. Next slide. And here's some of the libraries we've been working on uh, from the W3Up spec to the protocol and reference implementations uh, to the libraries built on top, like headless front end components and the CLI. Next slide. Um, and we're in beta and users like OpenSea, Tableland, and Koi uh, have been trying it out and have had positive feedback about its interface and simplicity and how it just works. And then we have an RC coming out in a few weeks. Next slide. Um, and then in building W3Up, we've incorporated our team's learnings from running our hosted IPFS services at scale with competitive performance reliability and talking to a bunch of users. Uh, these learnings are most obvious in two categories of lower level protocols. Uh, I know the word protocols is used generally pretty loosely, uh, but uh, we're heavily relying on um, what we call together the Deep Space Nine protocols, these lower level protocols. Uh, next slide. Um, and these two categories, uh, so first for da data verifiability, we obviously use IPFS, but more specifically, when we can, we send around sets of blocks in car files and verify those rather than transacting block by block. And this is even the case in user-facing situations like uploads and reads. And then for auth, we use UCAN. We use, we've worked a bunch with Fission to design a protocol that services can practically use. Rockley shared this work in the UCAN invocation spotlight earlier. Um, and aside from user-owned identity and the benefits that come with that, UCAN also notably allows permissions to be trustlessly delegated from one party to another. Next slide. Uh, and then hopefully efficiency with verifiability sounds great to you. Uh, and taking a step back, we think there's a lot of others in the PLN, um, a lot that others can utilize from W3Up and DS9, especially because they were built to be generic protocols. And our goal today is to get you excited enough in them to explore more. Um, and in terms of uh, folks to get you excited, no better person than Alan Shaw. So I'll hand uh, things off to him to talk more about the technical bits. Oh, no. OK, David, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to deep dive in five minutes, uh, but this is going to be a little deep dive on uh, the new architecture we have for Web3 to storage and NFT to storage, and we call it W3Up. Uh, as, and here it is. So here is the big architecture diagram, but don't worry, we're going to build it really slowly uh, so it's easier to understand. So. First of all, client side, server side, you get, you know, understand that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, we have uh, the client 
uh, and it could be like the CLI or the client libraries or a web app. Um, but it, what it does is it does some work locally. Uh, and that's on the left hand side there. Um, and what it does is it creates a car file um, of some DAG uh, of their upload uh, or the thing they want to upload. Um, and this is done in like a streaming manner. And this is interesting because like all of our DAG generation tooling uh, in JS so far has been focused on putting blocks in a block store. Um, so then we, we have to create the DAG in memory or on disk and into a, into a block store and then export it. And this is just like uh, slow and kind of memory intensive and disk or, or disk space in, intensive, depending on how you do it. And like in browsers, you only get a certain amount of memory to be able to do that sort of thing. You don't want to have another copy of it in memory. So we've had people complaining about that. So we built these tools to make it easier to just um, stream stuff um, up to our service. So uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, and so the other thing that the client does is it signs a UCAN um, with like details that are specific to their upload. Um, and it invokes this storage method, which is store slash add. Um, and it's either for their account or for someone else's account where they've been delegated access to put stuff in it. But on on behalf of them, which is amazing. Um, FYI, you can stand if you didn't know stands for user controlled authorization network. Um, and so we've been collaborating with Fission on the spec. Um, and you can are essentially an extension to JWTs, and they allow users to authorize what they do themselves. It's amazing. Um, so anyway. Uh, once the UCAN is signed, um, it gets sent to our W3UP API, and we call this a UCAN invocation. Um, and the server validates the signatures and the delegation chain in the UCAN, um, and that ensures that the user has sufficient access to invoke the action, or what it's called in UCAN terms as capability. Um, and so in this case, the user is asking to add a car file to their storage space, um, and we, uh, we and uh, uh, and, and so what we do is we're, when we send um, car files, we actually address them by a CID. And that CID is a car CID. A car CID is just a special CID that is the hash of the entire car file. And that hash is baked into a signed URL that is sent back to the user. Um, and then that and that URL ensures that the data they upload um, must hash to the same value as the, as the car CID. So. That's super cool. Um, and then the user takes that URL and uploads the data to that URL, um, the, the data being the car file. Um, and then the upload is complete. Um, so that's super rad. And the, the difference here from our old infra is aside from the UCANs, which is <laughs> like huge anyway, but uh, is, is that the car goes directly into a bucket. So there's no proxying for a worker. They don't send it to us. They send it directly to where it needs to be. Um, and that is effectively a speed increase and a cost reduction. And um, perhaps most importantly, the upload location doesn't necessarily have to be our, our service. It could go straight into Saturn or Filecoin, for example. Uh, so that's super cool. So then the, when the upload is in Elastic IBFS, uh, it's available for bit swap availability uh, for other people to bit swap as they do. Um, I've talked a bunch of times about how Elastic works. So I'm not gonna re repeat it here. Um, I, did, I did a really good talk. I think I did a really good talk at IVFS camp uh, called Five Billion Blocks. Uh, if you're interested in uh, Elastic IVFS and how it works, then check out that. Um, so anyway, this upload process, uh, it's much faster and more reliable than it was previously uh, because the cars are generated in the streaming manner rather than all in memory. And also by storing it directly into the bucket, we are per upload request chunk size can be like four gig. It doesn't have to be like a hundred megabytes anymore. And then this is, this is just makes stuff a lot, whole lot faster. So, uh, so super cool. And then you can see the difference in these benchmarks where uh, for W3 up, you can see like around 40% or faster upload speeds. Um, and then we can do some more optimizations to make this faster. Uh, the second upload is the same data. And the cool thing about W3UP is because we're using car CIDs and addressing things and using content addressing properly, um, you effectively get infinite compression. You don't have to upload the thing again. If someone else has uploaded that car file, you, the service just says you're done and you don't have to upload it. So it doesn't take any time to upload the thing. It's, it's zero. It's a 100% it's speed increase from. <laughs> uh, anyway, you, you get the idea. 
Okay, so anyway, back to diagram. Sorry, moving on. I know we're short on time. Uh, ugh, the car is also sent to our Cloudflare hosted HTTP gateway. It's cached there for fast availability over HTTP. Our gateway is called W3 Link. You can access it at W3S.link. Uh, it's kind of similar to dweb.link. Um, and so the data gets copied there and it remains as a car at rest. It means that our gateway serves data, uh, serves IBFS content address data directly from car files, which is kind of cool. And in our gateway, we build some awesome indexes. We call one of them Dudeware. Uh, the other one is called SatNav. Uh, and uh, and that, that allows us to serve the IPFS content address data directly from those car files. Dudeware tells you which car files your DAG can be found in. It's a mapping from root CID of the DAG to one or more car CIDs. And then SatNav is uh, navigation within your car. Uh, SatNav index is a mapping from car CID to all the block offsets within the car file. So it's, it's actually a car v2 index if you know and care about that sort of thing. Uh, anyway, um, I digress a little bit. Uh, so if you want to know about, a bit more about gateways, then check out our gateway. It's called Freeway. Uh, it's very fast uh, and uh, good fun. Um, anyway, so pretty soon Spade will be uh, helping us put those car files in Filecoin, uh, deals uh, with boost storage provi providers and renewing them as well. So that's going to that's gonna be awesome very, very soon. Um, and then throughout this whole process, our verifiable, uh, our verifiable UCAN log store um, uh, collects these uh, UCANs that we add, and that will uh, later provide us with verifiable transaction receipts. Um, and we can also track metrics through the data pipeline by um, looking at these uh, UCAN logs that we've got. Um, so you can also see the benefits of using UCANs uh, with uh, user-owned identity in the new architecture. There's verifiability at every step uh, in permissioned interactions uh, and user-owned portable identity. Uh, delegatable permissions allow more efficient data pipelines uh, from where the data is sitting. So for instance, like if you're a NFT minting tool, you can have your users upload directly to W3Up without needing to run a server to proxy the upload. And they don't even need to know that they're uploading to W3Up because they can just be delegated the permission to do it and then just send their data where it needs to be so they don't have to register with us or anything they just they can just be given access which is rad um cool i'm you really, probably need really to skip this time. i'm gonna skip this bit um but the i'm gonna quickly just uh talk about the um the problem that this is solving and then if you want to look at the slides afterwards i can the biggest ux problem we have is how to make like public key cryptography tenable to a web2 crowd um the web2 crowd are like they're, they're used to centralized services and just let you log in with your email address and so the problem is when you switch devices or lose a device or you drop your phone in the toilet um then how do you how do you gain access to your, your stuff if you lose your private key or don't have access to it from another device well uh, we have a solution for that and uh that allows you to gain access to your stuff using just your email and these are the slides that i'm just going to breathe past because i don't have enough time to present them but you can go and look at them anyway blah 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 blah, blah. there we go cool all right so uh wrapping up hopefully up next for w3 up is that we've we've built this ucan based auth protocol so we can run w3 up on decentralized infra as well DAG House will be doing this um, a lot with our products, um, but based on your users' needs, you can use W3Up whenever you need to and get the UX benefits that provide. So, but um, some of the my favorite ideas that we're hopefully going to try and um, get get to doing is writing up those directly to Saturn L1s or Filecoin SPs, um, and uh, you can validation and receipts and on the chain using the FVM uh, would be super rad. So I'm really excited for, for some of the stuff that is just literally opening up for us to take advantage of. Um, very cool. Uh, all right, that's about enough from me and David. I'm really sorry it's taken so long, but um, if you are interested in this, then please reach out. Um, you can check out our current beta. It's out at the moment. We're hoping for an RC later this month. Um, and yeah, oh, demos. We've got two demos, uh, demo sessions, uh, big demo session for deeper dives. If you're interested in, in actual demo and usage and how, how things work um, on the March 24th, Fourth on the 31st, uh, and we'll record it and you can have it. And um, yeah, uh, thanks for here letting me squirt my voice at you for a while. <laughs>